Welcome everyone. We often come across the term consumerism. What exactly is it? In today's video, we will explore about it and its various aspects. Consumerism It's a fancy word that describes our society's obsession with buying and owning stuff. We are told that we need the latest gadgets, clothes and cards to be happy and successful. But is that really true? We will try to find the answer in this video. Companies use sneaky marketing tactics to make us believe we need their products to fit in with others to be happy. And it's hard to resist the temptation to buy new things, particularly when they are consistently pushed in front of us. But here's the thing. Consumerism has a huge dark side. As in the process of buying more, that is, overspending, overspending can lead to debt and constantly buying new things can leave us feeling empty and unsatisfied. A hollow feelings generated out of deriving satisfaction from materialistic things. And let's not go to the environmental impact of all waste created by consumerism which is another area of concern. The origin of consumerism can be traced back to the Industrial Revolution, which started in Britain in the late 18th century. The Industrial Revolution brought about the mass production of goods, which led to an increase in the availability of products and a decrease in their cost. As a result, people began to have more disposable income and access to a wider range of goods than ever before. The rise of capitalism and the belief in the free market system led to the idea that consumerism goods was not just a means of satisfying basic needs but a way of expressing one's identity and status in society. This idea was enforced by the emergence of new forms of advertising and marketing which sought to create desire and demand for products that people did not necessarily need. This idea was reinforced by the emergence of new forms of advertising and marketing which sought to create desire and demands for products that people did not necessarily need. In the United States, the 1950s often considered the golden age of consumerism. This was a time of economic growth increased purchasing power and the expansion of middle class. Consumer goods, particularly cards and household appliances, became symbol of success and social status. Advertisement in popular magazines and on television promoted the idea that people needed the latest products to keep up with their neighbors and be happy. The golden age of consumerism in India began in the 1990s when the country began to liberalize its economy and open up to foreign investment. This period saw a significant increase in consumer spending and a shift towards a more market-oriented economy. One major factor in the growth of consumerism in India during this time was the rise of the middle class, which was able to afford more goods and services. As income rose and people became more aspirational, they began to demand higher quality products and services including foreign brands. The growth of consumerism in India was also facilitated by the expansion of the retail sector with the establishment of large shopping malls, supermarkets and online retailers. These developments provided consumers with more options and made it easier for them to access a wider range of products. Having examined the history of consumerism, it's time to explore its positive and negative aspects. Consumerism has a significant impact on economic growth and development by creating a cause and effect relationship between consumption and economic activity. When people consume more goods and services, it creates demand which results in increased economic activity. 
This surge in economic activity in turn leads to higher employment rates, wages and the expansion of the economy. Moreover, consumerism also encourages innovation and entrepreneurship among businesses as they strive to develop new products and services that satisfy consumers' needs. This leads to the growth of existing industries and the emergence of new ones, which further fuels the economic activity. In addition, consumerism can increase disposable income, which means people have more money to spend on goods and services. This increased spending can drive economic growth and development, leading to the creation of new jobs and businesses. Consumerism has both positive and negative effects. While it promotes economic growth and development, it can also lead to increased debt levels and environmental damage. One of the significant issues with the consumerism is that it promotes overconsumption, leading to the depletion of natural resources and the generation of excessive waste. This in turn can result in severe environmental consequences including pollution, deforestation and climate change. Another downside of consumerism is the unhealthy focus on material possession, where people tend to define themselves by what they own rather than who they are. This can lead to a lack of fulfillment and meaning in life, as people become trapped in a cycle of buying and owning things. Furthermore, consumerism can worsen social inequality with those who cannot afford to participate in the consumer culture, often marginalized and excluded from society. This can lead to several social problems, including poverty, homelessness, and crime. Let's explore what the experts in the field have to say by delving into the pages of their books. Here are a few great paragraphs from some books on consumerism, which I'll read for viewers. The consumer society is one that thrives on a simple equation, more is better, but this equation only works when you don't stop to think about what more really means. More stuff, more gadgets, more clothes, more toys, these are all things that can bring temporary pleasure. But they don't bring lasting happiness. In fact, they often lead to the opposite, cluttered stress and a sense of emptiness. To break out of the cycle of consumerism, we need to learn to value experiences of our possessions and to find contentment in the simple things in life. This was from the book The Story of Stuff by Annie Leonard. Next one from the book The End of Growth Erupting to Our New Economic Reality by Richard Hinberg. Consumerism is not a neutral force. It's a system of power that benefits those who control the means of production and distribution. It's a system that perpetuates inequality as those with more money are able to consume more and exert more influence about the market. To truly address the problems of consumerism, we need to challenge this system of power and work towards a more democratic and equitable economy. This means promoting worker rights, supporting local and sustainable businesses, and encouraging alternative models of ownership and control. Last one from the book. Consumerism is a form of self-harm. It is belief that happiness can be found in things rather than in relationships, creativity and meaningful work. It is the belief that happiness can be found in things rather than relationships, creativity and meaningful work. It is a belief that leads to a life of constant dissatisfaction as we are always seeking the next purchase to fill the void. To break free from consumerism, we need to recognize that our well-being is not dependent on our material possessions. We need to focus on building strong communities, nurturing our creativity and living in harmony with the natural world. This is from the book The High Price of Materialism by Tim Kessel. Now I would like to conclude this video saying with this, while consumerism may bring economic benefits such as growth and innovation, it is essential to recognize its negative consequences. The negative impacts of excessive consumption of goods and services are widespread, affecting the environment, society and individual well-being. 
It is therefore important to strike a balance between consumption and sustainability by prioritizing our values and goals of our material possessions. We must embrace sustainable economic growth and the use of reusable products to mitigate the adverse effects of consumerism on the planet and our well-being. By adopting a more mindful approach to consumption, we can create a healthier and more equitable world for ourselves and future generations. Thank you everyone.